Hello and welcome to another one of my City of Heroes videos. My name is Phil, aka At Wildlight, on the Reunion server on the Homecoming City of Heroes game. And today I want to do a video of just showing you. Uh, it's probably hopefully the first of a series of videos uh, called Fun Classes, <laughs> Fun cl Fun Archetypes. We call them cla archetypes. Uh, that's what they're called in the game. I'm used to calling things by the role-playing terms. We call these classes. And today, I'm going to show you uh, my Water Blaster Storm Summoning character. So this is this is kind of her 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 power set right here. Water Blasting. We've got all the Water Blasting powers, and then we got some Storm Summoning powers uh, for some crowd control and debuffing and the such. Uh, I'm not here to go over the build details. However, if you do want the details, you can come and join my Discord server, or you can take screen captures, I suppose. And you can have an idea of what I've got set up here. This is not the most perfect build or anything like that. I'm not a big building freak of nature. Hell, I put three slots in flying just because I think flying is awesome. And I love to fly fast. So don't look at me for like the best builds. But this is fun. And the whole video series that I'm going to be doing here is about playing uh, fun, fun classes. Now, to do, I'm also going to kind of combine this today with an extra bonus of showing you uh, one of the best Ouroboros story arcs you can do for getting salvage uh, for your incarnates, for, to get your incarnate level up here uh, and whatnot. So we're going to combine these two into one. Now, any good superhero, by the way, uh, does have basically their street outfit, but then when they're ready to get into a fight, they're ready to power up and such, and Aqua Force here is no different. Uh, I have her original outfit right here. And Boom. So every character, you could do this with macros really easy. Uh, and for more information, come and see that. Uh, give Come talk to me in Discord. I can give you that macro. It's a very simple macro. And then I believe we have the high gear color outfit that I made later on. I actually get a lot of compliments on this one. Probably helps that she leaves a ra rainbow behind as she runs around. So there you go. Very colorful. Now, I'm going to show you how much fun this character is while playing her, uh, playing uh, the character in a mission. And the one we're looking for is Burden of the Past, Dark Historia, Chapter 1. Now, I'm just going to jump into it, and I'm going to talk about why this is a good story arc to play. At the same time, I'm going to talk about why the class is fun to play. So... Go ahead and teleport over to Dark Story. We're just going to jump right into the mission, get right to it. Now, I'm going to be showing you how to do this kind of quickly, because this is a mission you're going to want to farm for Incarnate Salvage. Every time you run this, you get an Imperial Merit, and then you get your choice of a second Imperial Merit or some Incarnate Salvage, and you want to take the Salvage. It's just worth a lot more, and the such. In this first mission, I'll only be doing a little fighting at the end because a lot of this can be stealth through. Um, and first, you got to talk to Sigil here. Not here to go over all the story. When you're playing through this, you can take your time and go through the story, and and you can do that, and that's really great. It's a good way to to go about it. And let me just take a look at my powers here because I forgot if I brought a particular power on this character. Got so many powers. I'm like, hey, let me show off all this stuff, and I completely forget if I brought the right power for. Okay, not a big deal. We're gonna stealth through here. So let me activate my defensive powers. Turn on auto cast on hasten, and we're gonna just go for it here. Whoa, not not hover though. Hover slows me down. Uh, need to run fast, but there we go. Faster. All right. And we're just going to go there. Now, this Dark Astoria story arc has four missions. And two of them are relatively fast and can be stealth through. This is the first one. And it is caves. Caves suck. But it is big open caves. And the thing to kind of keep in mind with big open caves is you always want to be going down. Down, 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 down. As long as you're going down, you're doing okay. Uh, and whatnot. There's a couple of twists and turns occasionally, and it helps if you have a reveal. I forgot to buy reveal on this character. I need to go and buy reveal. That will make this go a little bit faster, but I'll do okay without it. I've done this a few, a few times. Though the maze does get randomized a little bit each time. 
So we'll go right over to here. I think I have to talk to this guy real quick. Oop, he just got gobbled up. Super sad. Go ahead, turn off fly because I think I'm... Because now I have to go beat up some bad guys at the very end of this. And that is a dead end. You do hit those sometimes. Usually... Uh, usually there's not too much backtracking, but there might be a little bit here. We'll see. Ah! Oh, I am being... I am being pushed over to a different direction there. Okay, I might be going in a circle there. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I get for staring at the map a little too much. All right, so to beat up these guys here, we're going to finally get to see a, a few of the powers that I'm pulling off here. So this class is fun because you get a lot of damage and, and water. And this is, by the way, a Corruptor. I should have started by saying, hey, this is a Corruptor. It's one of my favorite Corruptor builds. And throwing out a bunch of water effects is just a ton of fun. It never gets old. You're going to see I'm using a lot of color with this color palette here. But it just never gets old. And it's super effective. And just the animations and everything. And by the way, that first mission is really that fast. But the, but the animations are just so much fun with water. Now, most of my characters follow a, a comic book uh, character that I really enjoyed or one that I've created. This character follows neither of those trends. I simply saw a post saying that Water Storm Corruptor is fun. And I decided to try it out. And once I started playing it, I couldn't stop playing the character end up becoming one of my main characters and one that I've got to level 50. One of the first characters I got to level 50. So that is, that is, uh, that, that, that is just, it's just a ton of fun. So let's go in and, and we're going to take care of some more bad guys. Uh, this one, you have to find the leaders and, and kill, uh, take care of the leaders. And the leaders, leaders can be a little little fun to find in this one. It's a building. It's a two, uh, three stories, but the, the leaders are always on the first two. And I can never remember what they're called, but it might be the Conqueror right here. So we'll go ahead and take care of it. Now let's show off some of the other powers, the defensive and the snowstorm. So snowstorm slows them down. Freezing rain... Well, make them slip and fall and all kinds of other things. It's just a ton of fun. You can combine this with Whirlpool and then throw them back with a gust of wind when they get too close. Get back. Wow, the weak one, was, the weak one wasn't impressed. Let's try that again. Nice thing about uh, gust there is it's actually on a very, very quick cooldown. So keeping people off of you, really, not too hard. Oh, aren't you? Aren't you a bad person? And you can see I, I kind of keep them down. I do have O2, which is good for healing other people. I don't use that a whole lot. But as you can see, I killed one of the leaders here. Usually it's one leader on the first floor, two on the second floor. So I'm going to go to the second floor, which uh, usually there's an elevator around hereabouts. Uh, and there it goes. You have to get up there. Get up there. That's what I was looking for. Once you've done this like a few times, you can get a little, little quick, hopefully, at farming it. We're looking for more of those conquistadors, so let, well, we need two more. Um, I do have this set, I think, at negative one. Makes it easier and faster to farm. You can set it harder if you wish. You do you. That's what I always like to say there. Um, by the way, stealth is also part of this set with Steamy Mist. So that's what you see me using here and not getting caught. That's probably one of the leaders right there at the end of that hallway right there. So we're going to go down that Tempest there. There's a couple guys right here I'm going to take care of first just because I can. You got Geyser. I think another really cool thing about this is the animations. Uh, you just punch into the ground like you're some sort of Superman. It's hard not to like that. So that ice storm is slowing them down. The gust is pushing them back. It just makes them really hard to actually get an offense set up. 
And if you've ever fought against enemies with this skill set, there was a there's a villain uh, hero or a villain hero, <laughs> uh, a villain boss. I forget her name, which Storm or something like that. And she is brutal to play against, especially as a melee character. She is just so brutal. Uh, let's see here. And then there's the big signature water splash right here. That's just a geyser. And it's just... Boom! Like, that just never gets old. That's the ultimate. Another thing I like about this uh, offensive power set, it has no point-blank shenanigans. You do have to talk to Detective Hops. He's always, like, right there in the dungeon, so he's easy to find. Sadly, I've not actually gotten into any of the leaders yet. Uh, maybe this Tempest is one of the leaders. Who knows? Like, blowing them back. Only problem... I guess one of the weaknesses of this set is it's not the best against flying creatures. Now, a lot of the classes I play, they all have to be soloable. Um, it, you know, if they can be great in a team, that's extra bonus, and I do build some team-based characters. Uh, but they have to at least be somewhat decent in solo to be fun to me. That's just me. All right, that was one of the leaders right there. We need one more leader, and that'll be a little bit harder to find because that will be mixed up in here somewhere. Usually one of the smaller rooms. It's more fun when they're clumped together than I could do big AoEs on them. All right. Come on over here. Now, if you don't really want to see... Um, me take apart these guys one time and i'm not going to kill any more than i probably really have to but if you want to skip ahead towards the end of the video you can see how the reward structure works out but if you want to see uh more about how this class plays and uh, some of the nuances of the missions uh, so you can get fast at it uh, you're more than welcome to sit around and watch i'm looking for one more leader here uh, because I am apparently missing one of these guys. And they can be in any of these little hallways, in these little side rooms. Uh, they will sometimes hide very, very well. And it's very rude. They should know that I'm trying to arrest them. Now that's the elevator to the third floor. That's not usually going to have uh, another leader in it. Oh, this is kind of a little bit of a dead end there, isn't it? All right. So we're gonna we're gonna go in there. I'm sure we've all been here before. We're like, oh, I can't find that last guy. He's hiding from me. The game doesn't like to make some of these super obvious. It's possible he is on the first floor. Usually, usually, uh, it's two of them on the second floor. And I didn't really search the first floor all that super well. You see, I got a lot of unexplored space there. And those side rooms, those are the bugger bears. Those are the ones where they like to hide out and cause little problems. So I do like to search these guys. Not unusual to find big old groups and clumps of them right here in these side rooms. But so far, it is pretty empty. That one's a dead end. So we are not finding anything. I'm not finding anything today. Wait. You don't think that's it, do you? Right, right there at the beginning? That would be something this game would do, I'm not going to lie. Steam Spray is your kind of, uh, your, uh, your AoE, um, cone. And it's pretty effective. That was it! That leader was right there at the beginning, right there in the face, and I ran right by her, so, uh, don't be like Phil and skip things at the beginning, just assuming they're not the leaders. It very well could be. Now let me fly up to this elevator again. Ah! Oops. We'll go into there, and now we're ready to go up to the third floor, which thankfully is pretty easy to get to. And this could be fun to run with your friends as well, especially if, if one of you has assembled a team. For the last mission, it can make it go by really quick. I get a little bit of a cutscene in here. 
and we'll fly through some waves in a minute. The like most of these classes, this game that or um, this combination has a self to hit damage button called Tidal Forces. That's really helps to up your damage temporarily. So you can use that uh, as well. One of the good combinations here is I really haven't shown it off too much is uh, is the ice uh, freezing rain. I call it ice storm for some reason, but it's really freezing rain. And I'll use it against you get two waves of enemies here and I'll use it against the first wave here. So we'll put down freezing rain and then put down a whirlpool on it. Whirlpool does more of your damage. Icy rain just keeps pushing them back. And this alone is just a very damaging combo. You're playing with a group, these weights are a lot bigger. Steam spray there. Wow. I don't think I've seen one of these little tiny creatures before. He purrs. Is he dead now? I think he's dead. Alright. That's the second mission, just like that. We'll head on over to third. The third is arguably the the can be the longest. Stealth will help out once again with this. We're gonna call her, get that third mission from her. We gotta investigate the Sioux. Uh, again, if you like what you're seeing here, uh, let me know if you want to see more videos like this, if you have any requests, anything like that. What kind of video series could I make? I don't, I don't know what other video series I could go here with Homecoming. I've made a lot of how-to videos, and they're very helpful, and I've been getting a lot of feedback from people, and thank you for that. Uh, a lot of positive feedback, and a lot of people subscribing, and, and, and that's all very appreciated. Uh, but... Uh, for this next part of the mission, these guys have a little conversation. Then you can click on this guy after a minute. But if there's, uh, if there is uh, anything uh, more that I can uh, do to help you guys out, let me know. Uh, any other videos you want to see? You want to see more fun classes? Do you want to see different types of Oro missions? Does it help to put these Oro missions up? I don't know. You know, the problem is an exact walkthrough doesn't always work because uh, there is some randomization here. Now, when you're talking to this guy, tell him you don't want to fight. Otherwise, you end up in an extra battle. You don't have to do. Usually just stick with the bottom options. Once you do that, you can go into here. And that's when you'll have the, the map show up here. And we'll get in and get to work. There are three Goloes and then you have to kill the boss. Uh, did I have... Okay, I do have stealth turned on. So, the Glowies... Now, I have a Glowy mod turned on. You guys might be able to hear it when I get close. Because I do have the video picking up some of the game volume. I'm surprised there wasn't a glowy right there. But we're looking for the head of the, the house. And, okay, so you can hear my glowy music there. I'm going to turn it up for a minute. You hear that? So normally, in the game, it sounds more like a wah 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 wah, and it can be very hard to pick up. Uh, I'm using a mod uh, that's very easy to install. Uh, Homecoming has its own mod manager. We have the link to that in our Discord server, and uh, or you can just find it with the Google search. Look for Homecoming mod manager. It's really easy to find. I don't know if I can search this without trigger. Yeah, they're gonna see me there. That's fine. It's a good reason to teach them a lesson. I'll show off storm cloud. I don't show off storm cloud very often, but let's put up a lightning storm cloud. This thing summons a storm cloud here that just starts electrifying people. It's super great. And hurricane. I use this more of an oh shit button, but it just keeps people away from you. Might have fought some enemies who have this. Between that and the lightning storm, it's like this guy's gonna try to get close to me. He's not gonna be able to get close to me. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is just so much fun. Just look at that. That poor guy's not getting anywhere close. Have a nice day. I'll go ahead and turn that off, though. I could turn on... I'll put on the uh, normal color palette there, and you'll see what it looks like normally. All right. Usually, I don't know if you have to talk to this lady or not, but I always grab her 
uh, and this glowy here. Sometimes there's a glowy here in the corner. And that's one of the items I needed, so I had to come here anyways. One more glowy in the warehouse. And then uh, defeat the head. Really don't need reveal for this, only because I, you know, this warehouse pretty com this layout for warehouse is pretty common. But I don't know if videos for Ouroboros uh, story arcs would be super helpful just because there is so much randomization of these things. Not to mention, I'll, I'll start recording the video and then I'll get stuck because of the randomization finding this last person. That could be very boring to watch. But you guys can tell me what you think. But I do plan maybe if there's positive reaction uh, to make more videos showing off fun classes like this. Fun archetypes. Okay. So far, no glowy. Oh, I think it's over there. Sometimes you see it before you hear it. Gonna grab this guy right here. I do like that they've got like this whole uh, bamboo and wood set up here. Like it's some sort of uh, little Asian setup right in here. All right, gonna beat up this guy here. We're gonna show him who's boss. We're gonna put that whirlpool combo down that I like so much. And then we're gonna hit him with a geyser. Now the other thing about the water set is you've got this combo system. So if you build up enough water points, then you'll see these buttons light up and they will become more effective uh, if I use them. And that was it. Kill the leader, got the glowies, we're out. It's that quick, boys and girls, that fast. We're about the 20 minute mark. And I usually, I've done these as fast as under 20 minutes before when I'm really zipping it. Uh, it's going to take us a little longer because I'm talking through some stuff and everything else and didn't bring reveal. All right. Got to go and kill a boss now. This is this gets a little little scary for a corruptor. They, they I, I enjoy uh, I enjoy playing them in most missions, but when you get up against really tough bosses, it can be a little difficult. So we're gonna see now. This one you just need to get to the end and kill the boss. That's it. So there is a lot of dungeon here, a lot of sewer system to go through. <laughs> but you can just basically stealth your way through it and get to the end. Reveal can help immensely in getting through this. Uh, again, I forgot reveal, and I've done this plenty of times without reveal. So we're just going to give it a sh the old California try here and do it without reveal. Just got to keep your eyes open to make progress. That's what you do. And it's a little hard to see in here. They definitely don't make it very easy. I am now going backwards. It should be pretty much a forward progression, more or less, the entire way. But sometimes it can be very hard to see uh, where to go next because this stern thing is so dark. There it goes. And sometimes it's like that little crevasse right there that you got to get through. Just can be a little crevasse on the side. You never know. But if you hit a dead end, you bounce off of it and you keep on moving. Now, when you get to this part here, we see that, that left, that right, you're getting closer. You're getting really close. And you start seeing more alien juicy parts. Oh, boy. Now you're getting warm. And then you're going to go down what I call the esophagus. Oh, boy. Now you're super close. It's really that easy. You don't have to fight all those things. You get over to here. And you talk to Tempest Lady up here. And I usually say you're not killing any of them. I don't know how you pick the other options. I just say none of them are dying. And this starts a, a boss fight. I'm probably just going to gulp an inspiration or two. It's not like I'm using these things for anything else. Uh, let's put on... Let's put on Hurricane. And then hit him with a big geyser, because this is a nice, big, fat, juicy group. Put that guy down there. Put that one right down there. I do like how it keeps blowing the back. Look at that. It's great area denial. They, they want to get to me. They just can't. Uh, I think that's it. 
that was really that quick, and partly because I have it on easy. Tougher would have taken me a little bit longer. And then just talk to Sigil. And then that's done. 22 minutes. When I say you can get under 20, no problem. And then when you're choosing, you can choose a second Imperium Mirror. So uh, let me pull up my list here, which you'll see in the in the log here. I got an Imperium Merit. I also got a genomic analysis. I think that is a salvage part. Let me see your incarnate attributes. Uh, I want to say that is incarnate thread common. And it said I got a genomic analysis. So yeah, that is a that's a fairly common one. But I'm going to go ahead and take another incarnate component. And you got a, you got a good chance for a common or uncommon. You might get a rare, very rare out of it. Either way, you come out ahead, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but I'll always take. Uh, I just got a regular, uh, a regular uh, common. This is just a common one. Uh, so uh, you, if you already got your build plan ahead of time with your incarnates, you can probably pick intelligently. <laughs> I'm just gonna pick one at random for now. Hit OK, and I am done. And I hit exit, and it really is that easy. So now the downside of doing these is you don't get merit rewards. I don't, uh, so you don't get any real good money out of that aside from what you got from, from killing enemies along the way. But you do get those incarnate salvages. So if you're looking for more of those, the mature rule of thumb with incarnate salvages is just play the game. As you level up, you get a whole bunch. And by the time you're like veteran level 20, 25, somewhere thereabouts, you've got enough to get everything up into its third tier. And, and by the time you're 30, 40, or so you got enough to get everything to fourth tier something like that just depends on how you've been playing what else you picked up along the way but if you want to grind up a little bit faster than that these missions can be really really good for that let me call her up and that is it i think i am done with that oro i'm ready to go back and do another one but i hope you guys found this uh, useful there are other by the way there are other dark astoria storylines you can do this one's just the easiest one for farming but this was just part one. There's a part two, part three. Some of them give rewards, some of them don't. Some of them are a lot, usually ones that don't are usually a lot shorter. That's not always the case, but it's generally how it works out. But I hope you guys enjoy this again. If you liked it, uh, let me know uh, in the comments section what other things you want to see. And I'll be happy to try to make some videos. If you want to see more videos about cool character concepts, fun character concepts, uh, then let me know. And the fun character concepts, like I said, are the ones that I do are always uh, solo friendly. I think will work well in teams. This character works really great in a team. Slows enemies down, puts them on their butt. What's not to like in a team? Does good damage, does good AOE. Brings a lot to the table for a team. But as you see in this video, I could crank up the difficulty, but she, the character has no problem uh, holding her own in a tough fight just because of all of that knockback and tripping, knockdown, uh, and debuffing and the such. As you look through these powers, you'll see that there is definitely quite a bit of, of like snowstorm is negative speed, uh, negative recharge. And oh, those guys were flying. It's a good one to use on your flying people. So you got some debuffs uh, with these guys, no problem. Freezing rain is more uh, de speed debuff, recharge debuff, defense rebuff, resistance debuff. So a lot of good juicy juicy stuff in there but anyways uh, let me know what you think and i'll catch you guys on the next video have a great day